Greetings and salutations, folks. I'm Josh from Lazy Acres. Thank you for tuning in. We are saving the world here, one trailer at a time. Today, we're gonna to do something a little different. We're gonna continue our series of orientation videos for 2023. This particular orientation is gonna be on the Grand Design Imagine. It's gonna give you some pointers on how to operate your trailer, not so much a sales video. This is gonna show you how to use it. Um, obviously, it's uh, this is a 2400 BH. The switches and uh, the layout is not gonna be exactly the same as your Imagine at home, but the principles and the application, I think is gonna work just fine. I'm here with my friend, that Dutch bad boy, Brendan Hannemeyer on the camera today. Brendan, say hello. How's it going, happy campers? Congratulations on your purchase of an Imagine, or if you're considering purchasing an Imagine, congratulations, that's a great thought to be thinking right now. We got a like button, we have a subscribe button, we're always putting out content of all the units that we have here, as well we're doing orientation stuff like this. So if you don't mind hitting that, it's gonna benefit you a little bit. Uh, we're on Facebook also, we're on Instagram, and we're on TikTok, so you should follow us along there also. Enjoy this informative video. What's going to be cool is at the very end of this video, we're going to have Brandon show you how the Compass Connect system works. He's a little younger than I am and better with the gadgets, so we're going to have him do that. But leading up to that, we're going to go through the basics. If you've seen an orientation video from Lazy Acres before, there is going to be a lot of repetition here, so you can skip through if you like, but we're going to try to hit all the points here. When you're hooking up a trailer, there's four things that make you legal. You've got your seven-way hookup. This is what controls the lights and the brakes in the trailer. You've got to plug that in. You have to have your chains hooked up. This is number two, have your chains hooked up and they need to be crisscross underneath the hitch. Um, so take the chain from the right hand side, hook up to the left hand side of the truck, left hand side, you get the idea there. Those need to be crisscrossed. Then we have our breakaway cable. On these Imagines, it's actually a pretty slick little breakaway cable. It's kind of like a slinky built in here. This hooks up to the truck with a separate link, which is what we got here. And while you're driving, let's say the truck or the trailer comes hooked off the truck, which is catastrophic, bad news. But if that happens, this pulls a pin out and activates the brakes on the trailer so it doesn't follow you down the road. That's number three. Fourth thing is you've gotta have your uh, coupler locked and a pin in through the coupler. All four of those things are necessary every single time you pull your trailer. Now, on the topic of pulling your trailer, I think, well I know, every single Imagine, whether it's a 17 MKE or the 3250BH or something in between, you need to be using a weight distribution hitch. We can sell you one, a dealership near you can sell you one, but you need a weight distribution hitch transferring the weight forward on your vehicle. Uh, I don't care what kind of truck you've got, I really think that's a thing you need to have. We have an on off switch here for the light at the front, that's just lighting up things at night time. That's slick. We're gonna hook up a propane tank. Now this trailer has never had propane put to it, so we're gonna do that here in live uh, in color. Take this off. We're gonna take the tank off here. Throw this on. Boom. Take the empty tank off. I just grabbed this other tank here off a used trailer here this morning. I know it looks ratty. But we're not here looking pretty, are we, Brandon? Nope, you are not. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna thread this on. This is just righty tighty, lefty loosey, just like you were taught when you were a kid. Um, you're also gonna thread this collar down. You don't gotta be crazy tight here, just hand tight. You just don't want the trail the propane tanks rocking as you go down the road. And then we're gonna take the propane tank itself and turn it on slowly. You don't just fire it on, you're gonna turn the tank on slowly, okay? What happens is if you turn the tank on too quick, there's a little ball valve in here that'll pop shut, won't let uh, propane go into the trailer because he thinks there's a leak. So you're just gonna turn that on nice and slowly. Now, <clears throat> the actual regulator here, there's maybe different iterations of this on different imagines, but in general, we have a switch here pointing at the tank we're drawing it off of. See how there's a little arrow there? In here, there's a piece of clear glass. If this tank was empty, so let's say this tank was empty, there's a red line that's gonna pop up there, and it's automatically gonna start drawing off of this tank. Once this tank goes empty, sorry, when we see that, we're gonna flip this over here to the other tank, and that red light right here is gonna turn clear again, because this tank has propane. Once this tank goes empty, it's gonna turn red. We're gonna flip it over to this side. What that does though, is as we're flipping those tanks back and forth, 
As long as you have the tank, the switcher pointing at the opposite tank, you can take this one off and get it filled. Does that make sense, Brennan? Yes. We had a truck in the background. So, um, and it, the, the just of it is, have the tank, the, the switch point at the tank you want to draw it off of. When that tank goes empty, that will go red. Now, uh, in Ontario, you can have your propane tanks on while you go down the road. There are certain provinces and states you cannot do that. So just keep that in mind. Here's our battery itself. Again, I just took off the used trailer here this morning. Um, not looking good. You are going to have a uh, battery box that's going to go around and shield this battery. That's important because you don't want the elements getting to it. Um, red is positive. Black is negative. I know that sounds obvious, but I do got to say it. One of the things here is um, you can't just leave these on here loose. You've actually got to tighten these down. If you have like a, like a connection, like electrical connection like this loose, it starts to arc, amperage starts to rise, and you'll start kicking breakers and fuses. So we're going to thread those on. There we go. Now for the battery for the winter, you got to make sure you bring it inside. Don't let your battery freeze. Um, you don't have to worry about disconnecting the actual leads on your battery of the imaginals because we actually have a battery disconnect switch inside the pass-through, which we're going to get to. So yeah, we're going to tighten these down, and yeah, we're going to use a wrench. When you're using a wrench, make sure you don't touch these leads together by accident. That's important because you'll arc them. You'll get a little sparky sparky. It's 12 volts, so you really can't hurt yourself. There we go. Doing good here at the, at the front, Brennan? Great. There is a uh, fuse here underneath. That's specifically for the front power jack. If your battery gets low or you've tried to pick up the truck or something like that with your jack and the amperage goes high, it'll pop that fuse. Keep that in mind. Uh, <clears throat> front, pa front, pa uh, front cap in three here. There's really no maintenance. Just keep your trailer clean. Um, we've got lights. The switch for those lights is inside the pass-through. We'll get to that. Um, we have manual jacks on all of these. Imagine that's a three-quarter inch socket on the jacks. We can bring those up and down. Oh, pardon me, golly. <laughs> like I said, not looking good here. But up and down with a, uh, a drill pretty easily. Get yourself a three-quarter inch socket. <clears throat> Let's continue on the battery front. So instead of actually taking a, a lead off the battery, we're just gonna disconnect the battery. If you're not using the trailer, just get the battery. Not too, not too difficult. Pop it back in. If this is connected, you can't take the switch out. With it up, you can take the switch out. Battery is disconnected. Just keep that up and in unless you're disconnecting the battery. Um, we've got an outside shower here. See that blue hose there, Brendan, in on the left? That's the hose for outside shower. This is like a quick neck, kind of like an air fitting. I do find people have a hard time with this because they're not actually pushing the hose in. You really got to push the hose in and pull back the collar at the same time, especially for the first couple times you're using it. We have our city water connection right here. So if we have water at the site, we're going to bring a hose from the site where it's hooked up at the post up in through here, bring it up, thread it on like a regular city water connection. If we have water at the site, we're gonna keep that to city water and there's gonna be water pressure at your taps. Whatever pressure you have coming out off the post is pressure you're gonna have on the trailer there. Now, really you should get a pressure regulator. It's a pretty cheap accessory you can get. Uh, and this is like a small piece of brass there. And that should go in between the city water connection and your, and your, uh, your hose just to regulate the pressure. Sometimes you get to a campsite and the pressure is ridiculous and you're gonna blow a line or blow a tap or something like that so you should get a pressure regulator in through there now that's for city water connection that's if we have water at the site if we want to fill the freshwater tank which so there's actually like an actual tank in through here and we're gonna fill that if we don't have water at the site you are gonna thread it into here flip it to fresh fill right here okay that's gonna force your freshwater tank to fill um, and then there's a water pump inside. We're going to talk about that you turn on and that's going to pump the water from the tank to your taps. City water, boom, fresh water fill, boom. Now there is another spot you can fill your fresh water tank. We're going to talk about that when we get there. Um, we have an outside receptacle. If this isn't working, it's because the GFI inside is tripped. We have cable and satellite inlet in through there. Cable, if you bring cable in, boom, it's going to go to all your coax spots. But satellite, you're not allowed to split that before the receiver, so that's why there's a satellite for your bedroom and a satellite for the living space. So 
so individual spots there. While we're down here, we also have our solar charge controller. That's that Furion piece. We have a selection right here. We can choose, um, I can't read upside down, lithium battery, sealed battery, your AGM battery. Because we're using a sealed battery, I've got this selected right there. But if we want to switch that, we can just hold this button, it'll go to AGM or lithium. And obviously, if you upgrade your batteries to a better battery, you'll need to adjust that. Basically, lithium batteries, my understanding, they charge at a higher voltage. Um, so that's something to consider. <clears throat> um, otherwise, that's pretty straightforward. You've got the solar panel on the roof collecting the sun juice. That comes down to here. This makes sure your battery doesn't overcharge. There's not really any maintenance on the solar panel. Just kind of try to keep it clean. Like, obviously, if there's leaves and stuff like that on there, it's not going to collect energy. So that's that. How are we feeling, Brendan? Good. Yeah? yeah okay. Feeling great. All right. <clears throat> Okay. The last campground I was at, I was the only one that didn't have a water pressure regulator. Yeah? Yeah, everybody had them. It yeah. was crazy. <laughs> so that's that's an important thing. I didn't mention that in the transcend orientation video we did. So, um, yeah. We'll make a comment. <laughs> 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 now, sealants um, on the corners and stuff like that, uh, Grand Design and Imagine, they do a really, really good job. They don't use putties. So what we've got is a Mylar tape that is in behind this corner mold and that seals that corner then they have a uh, uh, like a PVC foam tape in behind the corner mold as well and then they screw that on and that provides your primary seal your secondary seal is this clear silicone we see in through here like I said it's a secondary seal but still important for you to maintain it if you see it split or a void or something like that you should strip off that sealant and replace it there with clear silicone um, the more you spend on clear silicone, the better the quality is. So don't get your cheap DAP stuff. Get some legitimate clear silicone. We've done a video on roof maintenance. <clears throat> and yeah, check that out. It's like a 15, 20 minute video. I'm not going to do that all again. So uh, there is roof maintenance up there. Um, uh, you got to check your seals every 90 days. That's part of owning a travel trailer. And I explain what to do in that video. Um, these trailers, I don't know exactly the roof warranty. It's 12 years, Brennan, 15 yeah, years. It's, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, more. Yeah. yeah. It's which more is, than 12, 100%. Yeah, which is great. It sounds super, super impressive, but the seals are not covered by the warranty. So you've got to be up there checking those seals. Uh, other maintenance items, lubricate your jacks, lubricate your door locks, lubricate your, uh, uh, your coupler in through there, any moving parts on the outside. Hit those with a lubricant. I would suggest like a dry lubricant, like a Teflon or a graphite. That way dirt and grime don't stick to it, but it keeps everything nicely lubricated. <clears throat> We're gonna have two different styles of silo systems on these Imagines. This is the Schwintech style system. Uh, they're both by Lipper. Um, but basically, uh, this one just runs in and out straight. There's no maintenance involved. You don't grease anything in through here. If you get dirt or grime or something like that in this track, sure, clean that out. But there's nothing to lubricate in through here. Um, on the rack and pinion style slides, yeah, you can get underneath and lubricate that wheel that brings in out the rail. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's above and beyond. And most people don't do that. What you can maintain is your actual seals themselves. These are bulb seals and a wipe seal. The bulb seal provides the actual seal so water doesn't get in. The wipe seal wipes off any water or dirt as you're bringing in or out the slide. You can spray like a car seal lubricant on a rag and go up and down your bulb seal and your wipe seal, just keeping those nice and moist. Again, above and beyond your average camp ownership, but a uh, great thing to do. Still doing good, Brandon? Yep. I know there's some repetitive stuff in here, folks. So like I said, strip, skip over if you need to. Sewer drain is down through here. Some of these will have two sewer drains. Some of them will have uh, one, gate valves and such. The basics here are we're gonna have a sewer hose that we thread on, just like the cap threads off. We're gonna put that on, bring it into the sewer at the site. If we have sewer at the site, we're gonna leave your gray water tank open. The gray water is your sinks and your shower. We're gonna let that run out as it builds up. There's no reason to keep that closed. So if we have sewer at the site, we're leaving the gray water open. It is imperative that you leave your black water closed. If you if you happen to leave your black water open, what happens is the liquids will run out and the solids will build up on the bottom of the tank. No good. You'll get yourself a poo teepee up to the toilet. We don't want that. So leave your black water closed. The liquids and the solids will build up together. Once the tank is full, you'll come out here, 
close your gray water, open your black, it's gonna flush out all at once. Every Imagine has a black water flush kit. So while you have the black water open, and the gray water closed, we're gonna hook up a hose to your black water flush kit. It's labeled here on the outside. And we're gonna hook up a hose here, turn on the water, and that's gonna spray the inside of your black water tank. Um, it is uh, also imperative that you don't hook up your black water flush kit if your gate valve is not open. So have your black water open when you're hooking up your, uh, your black water flush kit. That's imperative. I'm using the word imperative a lot. I feel pretty good about it, eh, Brennan? Eat there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, if you don't have sewer at the site, we're going, we're going to pull up to a dump station. Uh, you obviously, ha uh, your tanks are full at this point. You're going to pull, uh, I would say, probably your gray water first. Let that flush out. Close your gray water, open your black water, and hook up your uh, black water flush kit. Um, Everybody says to do it the other way. Which is fine, and I would normally agree with you there, Brendan, but because we have a black water flush kit at the end, it's cleaning out that hose. Why they do black then gray first is because the black water gets the hose all dirty, the gray water cleans it out afterwards. But because we have a black water flush kit at the end, uh, the black water flush kit, the water from that is gonna be cleaning down the, the tank. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a great little accessory to get is a clear sewer fitting here. That way you can wash, you can watch the water come out and the sewage come out. Once that starts turning clear, while you have the black water flush kit running, you know your tank is clean. Okay, great little accessory to get. I'm sure our store has those. It's a fun time too. It's a fun time. Just yeah, watching you, all your- You could time your yourself. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got our roof ladder. Get up on your roof, check your seals. There's a 300 pound limit here. Um, I don't love the idea of you going up there with a caulking gun in your hand because it is kind of a two hand operation. So just be careful when using that ladder. Now, uh, imagine it's gonna have two different amperages for hydro. So if we have hydro at the site, we're gonna hook it up, plug it in, and we're gonna use one of these cords. So the smaller imagines, the 2600 and down will be 30 amp service. And that's what that cord looks like. We basically just take the cord, plug it in, and plug this into the campsite. Now, what if you go to a campsite, Brendan, and you don't have 30 amp service? You have 15. Yeah, you have 15. Yep. And you gotta use that cord, and yep. then you're gonna use a little adapter. Yep. And that's gonna allow you to plug into the 15. When we're on this 15 amp adapter, we can't use the AC or the electric water heater. That's your restriction there when you're running a 15 amp service. So just keep that in mind. Now, that's great, straightforward, 30 amp service, easy peasy. The larger imagines are gonna have 50 amp service, and that's a much larger cord, like so. Um, and the reason they're, they have 50 amp service is because they're prepped for a secondary AC, so you always add a secondary AC to it. Um, if you don't have a secondary AC, you can just adapt that down from 50 to 30, and plug into your regular 30 amp outlet. You can also adapt that down from 50 to 30 and then down to 15, but again, you can't use an AC or electric water heater. Doing good there, Brennan? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Um, if you're plugged in, that means you can use stuff like your, your 110 outlets, your microwave, and your 110 appliances. If you're not plugged in, you'll be running off the battery. So that'll just be stuff like lights, water pump, radio, your 12 volt appliances. Your spare tire is going to cover it up with a Lazy Acre tire cover. That's great. Right here is your water heater. The water heater in all these imagines is the same. It's a six gallon gas electric. Um, in yesteryear, it was a plug that kind of uh, kept the water in the tank. Uh, recently, last year or so, they've switched this to a cap. I'm not sure what size that is. It looks like an inch or an inch or a sixteenth. But we can thread that on and thread that off. Um, for when you're operating the trailer, you're just going to leave that on, right? Because you're going to leave water in your uh, your tank itself for the season. But when you go to winterize, you're going to need to take this off and drain out the water out of the uh, the water heater. That's really the only thing you're doing out here. You're not touching this. You're not touching that. You're leaving this all alone unless you're winterizing your trailer itself and you're taking that cap off. We've also done a video on winterization. Check that out if you want to learn how to do that. First couple times, though, especially while it's in warranty, I would suggest you just bring it to a dealer and have them winterize it for you. Um, we have a, uh, an outside kitchen here on certain models. Um, uh, I actually haven't lit this before. Okay, so just like a barbecue at home. Turn on the, the, uh, 
uh, the tanks in the front. Take your uh, uh, hose that's in through here and hook it up to your gas fitting down below. This is like an air fitting, just like the outside shower. So you gotta release that sleeve, push the hose in and, and, and close it like that. There's also a little valve here to have in the on position. So that's in line with this. If you don't have that in the on position, you won't have any gas coming through the uh, quick release. Now, um, also if you have this in the on position, it doesn't allow you to activate the sleeve. So you gotta push this to the slide, activate the sleeve, put the hose in and then turn this on. And then while you're going down the road, you should always have this little black plug in place here, just kind of protecting the, the actual quick connect. That kind of makes sense, Brendan? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm waiting for you to tell me something doesn't make sense because I'm sure we're not doing the best job. Anyways, right. this is a 110 fridge on your outside uh, kitchens, which means it's not going to run off the uh, the 12 volts if you're just if you're not plugged in. So you got to be plugged in to use this 110 fridge. We have our uh, more light steps. This will be on the regular imagines. These are cool. They just flip up inside and lock into place like so. Now, here's the one kind of drawback on these, and it's just a little bit of a, a thing you gotta watch. When you go to bring this down, let's say we're up on a hill here, and the stair's sitting like this. What can happen is the door can collide with this stair. So you gotta make sure you adjust the feet up and down and through here. You do that with this switch right like this. So just make sure you keep an eye on that. Make sure the stairs aren't propped up too high and colliding with the door. Also, when you're bringing up and down the stairs, make sure you have your door all the way open because this will kind of collide with the door frame and stuff like that. We've got our Goodyear Endurance tires. Uh, there is a rating on the tires for PSI. Keep them at the maximum. Um, on the 14 inches, I believe it's 15 pounds. But anyways, read the tire and uh, check the, uh, the tire pressure on there. With uh, aluminum rims, you're gonna keep those torqued at 110 foot-pounds. When you get home from the dealership, retorque those down to 110 foot-pounds. You have bearings on through here. You can pop this piece out and grease your bearings at 6,000 miles. That's one shot of grease at 6,000 miles. At 12,000 miles, uh, you would take the, uh, the bearings apart and repack the bearings. Obviously, that's not your typical thing you do as, a, uh, as your average owner but you take that to a shop and have them grease your bearing, uh, repack your bearings. So 6,000 miles, you grease your bearings, 12,000 miles, you repack your bearings. And you don't just keep pumping grease in because it's a sealed bearing and you're gonna blow grease all over the backside of your brakes. Remember how I mentioned, uh, there's a secondary spot to fill up your freshwater tank. So sometimes you get to these provincial parks or state parks, I guess, I don't know, and they don't have an end on the hose to fill up your freshwater tank. That's why this gravity fill is in through here. We're gonna put that hose in there and that is going to uh, fill your freshwater tank. So that's not city water, that's fresh water. Once this tank is full, it's going to splash back out at you. Outside TV hookup, that's pretty straightforward. If your 110 receptacle isn't working out here, it's because your GFI is kicked inside. Good in through there. All right, Brian, we're going to talk about the awning and some interior stuff. We're going to come back for that. Right on folks, we're inside that Imagine and we're gonna talk about inside stuff, but before we do that, let's talk about the awning. The switch for the awning is on our Compass Connect uh, pad in through here. So we're just gonna push extend on the awning part and hold the button. This will go out about eight feet from the side of the trailer. It just keeps unraveling like so. What, there's a valance that you're gonna see start to droop down. Once that hangs down at 90 degrees, then your awning is out all the way. So see how that's at 90 degrees right now, Brandon? Yep. So that's out all the way. If you continue to extend your awning, you'll actually start rolling it up backwards, which is not ideal. So you just wanna bring it to that point and leave it. If it's windy, you put the awning away. If it's raining hard, you put the awning away. Um, an awning collapsing underneath the weight of rain or being pulled off due to wind is not a warranty thing. So uh, if it's at all kind of um, questionable, put the awning away, all right? Now we can create tilt or pitch towards one side or the other. And we do that by just 
bringing this side down right through here and that will angle the awning in such a way that the that a light rain will just run off when you go to bring the awning back up extend this up till it's perfectly flat in through here when you're cleaning your awning um uh, don't use any kind of harsh chemicals like dish soap or bleach or anything like that. You just want to use like a, a basic multi-purpose cleaner and we're just going to retract this. Come on in, Brennan. <clears throat> While we're retracting the awning in through here, there's a few safety things. By your door, there's a fire extinguisher. That's for putting out fires. Hopefully it doesn't happen. You've got a propane detector and that looks like that little device down through there. That's in different locations and different models. That is plumbed right into your battery. So if your battery starts getting low, that's gonna start beeping once every 30 seconds or so. There's also a smoke alarm and a uh, carbon monoxide alarm. Smoke alarm is right above you, Brendan. You gonna get that angle? Oh, buddy. So that has a uh, its own battery. So you wanna, if, that's, if, if that battery is getting dead, you'll want to, um, Change it. Change it. Thank you, Brennan. And then there's going to be a carbon oxide detector. And that's simply in the bedroom, the main bedroom. Right here. Okay. Now, quick point on electrical. Your 110 plugs, you, to use those, you have to be plugged into 110 service. For the USBs that we see everywhere, you can use those off the 12 volts or just the battery. Um, we have our thermostat here. We'll probably come back to that later. We have our fridge here. Okay, this is a 12 volt fridge on these Imagines. The controls for the switch for the um, fridge are right here. Um, you can go to off, and then you can obviously adjust the temperature from there. Pretty straightforward stuff. You can hear the compressor come on when the fridge is going. One thing that's nice about these 12 volt fridges is that uh, uh, they cool fast. So you'll have like a cold fridge in about an hour and a half. Um, should we show off that fuse thing, Brennan? Sure. So, to get to the fuse on the 12 volt fridge, it's in behind uh, this vent right here. So it's a Robertson bit. So we're gonna take that one out. So there's a little fuse right here. That can be blown. Um, you have to take this black cap off and the fuse is there. So that could be blown. That could be why your fridges are working. Also, if you need, ever need to reset your fridge, um, uh, I guess at a certain point, the, the board will kick and you need to reset it if the battery gets too low. So that's how you'd reset that. While the, while the unit is plugged into 110, you would come in here, take out the fuse, put it back in. Obviously, speak to our service partner about that, but when they're referring to the fuse at the front of the fridge, that, that's what they were talking about right in through there. Um, what else here, Brennan? Into the bathroom. With our toilet, you're gonna wanna make sure you leave water in the toilet bowl. That keeps the stink in the tank, not coming up into your trailer, so you wanna leave an inch or two in the toilet bowl. I don't suggest you touch your toilet bowl after it's been used. <laughs> but uh, yeah, leave an inch or two, and that keeps the stink down, that's important. There is a shut off on the actual shower head, so if you have the temperature at the at the you have the water at the temperature you want, you can shut this off, shut turn this on, uh, save water that way. Typically, the GFI for the unit is in the bathroom, which is right here. So that's a GFI that's working. That's what a GFI looks like if it's tripped, just that yellow light there, and we're going to reset that. So if the outside receptacle. Uh, or a kitchen receptacle isn't working, it's probably because your GFI is kicked. So that's what you want to check first. Um, let's talk about the water pump. Now, the water pump is going to be given in different locations uh, each floor plan. Um, the easiest way to tell where the water pump is is I just come in and turn it on. And you can hear it. I cheated a little bit and I did that before we started this video. But sounds to me like the water pump is in behind this drawer. Let's just see if I'm right. I am right. I think. Yes. So why I'm showing you the water pump is 
there's what we call a siphon kit on the water pump. So you can, when you go to winterize, and we've done a winterizing video, you can check that out. When you go to winterize, so you're gonna put this into a jug of antifreeze, turn the valve that's right here on the pump towards that open line, and it's gonna pump antifreeze through the line. Sometimes though, after you've winterized it, or a dealership's winterized it for you, they've left the, the, uh, the valve pointed towards that open line, so you should come and check that uh, if you're not getting any water from the water tank uh, through the water pump. Now, um, if you're using city water connection, you're obviously not using the water pump, but if you are, you wanna make sure that valve is pointing towards the line that goes to the actual tank. So that's there. I'm just gonna put this out of the way. You're okay here, Brendan? Yep. The water heater. There is a bypass on the water heater itself, and why there's a bypass is so you don't put antifreeze in the water heater because it's hard to get out. Uh, and that's and to find the water heater is also, you know, different on each model. So you'll remember on this model, the water heater is at the back, right where the outside kitchen was, and that's underneath the bunks. So you have an access panel right there at the back, two screws to get to the back of the water heater. Uh, again, we're getting pretty in depth here. Um, but basically there's a bypass that uh, won't allow water to go into the tank. You want to make sure that's in the operational position before you try to light your water heater on gas or electric. Uh, and you can check out our winterization or summarization video to uh, see all that. Now we have our Compass Connect system and like I said, Brandon's going to come back in here and we're going to uh, set this up to his phone and operate this. But uh, if you don't want to use the Compass Connect, like on your phone, you can just use the switches. So in out for the awning, that's easy. In out for the slide, that's easy. Uh, whenever you're operating your slide, you should either go all the way out or all the way in. You shouldn't be halfway because it won't seal properly. Um, and in Schwinn Textile slides, they're not meant for that. So all the way in, all the way out. You have ceiling lights, that's obvious. Exterior light is for your awning. On off for your water pump, we already talked about that. On off for your gas water heater. On off for your electric water heater. It is really important that um, before you try to light any of your water heaters, either one, that you make sure you have water in the tank and you want to check the bypass on the water heater before you do that. Um, but nice and simple, just turn that on. If you're on the outside of the trailer, you hear go click, 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 and you're good to go. Electric, you won't hear anything, it just comes on. And then right here, we can actually see the, the levels of our black tank, our gray tank, our gray one create two tank or battery you can check the levels of that judging by how high these uh, lights are on if you're plugged into hydro it doesn't matter how crappy or low your battery is it's always going to read full like that one point on propane and Brendan you know this because we've we've done so many of these videos now the first thing you light is what you light the stove first which gets the yeah the gas running through all the lines yep. so top especially because You'll have air in the lines if you haven't used it all winter or haven't used it for a month. Always light your stove top first before you go to try to light anything else. So we'll go do that now. Um, oh, we still got some packing stuff on here. That's okay. Do this on the fly, right, Brennan? Exactly. Right, Brennan's not feeling the best today, so I appreciate We're still here and we're doing our job. That's it. So to light your stove top, you're going to turn this to the light. I can hear the propane coming through. And I'm just going to spark it. And just like I said, this is the first time we've lit this, so there's going to be air in the lines. And hopefully that sounds not too annoying when we top the mic. There we go. So now that I've lit the, the stove top, I can feel comfortable to go and light my furnace or my water heater because I know there's gas at the appliance. The oven is a little more painful to light because it's such a small gas line. We're gonna open this up, turn this to the pilot feature, and hold this in. As I hold this in, I'm gonna spark it. Now this takes even longer because like I said, it's a small gas line. Little trick here, Brandon, I'm actually looking Back at the glass, reflected. Reflecting. We're getting sparked. Getting sp lighting. Let's give her a second, here, bud. Be patient. Sorry, folks. Again, skip through this part if you like.
Boom! Just kidding. <laughs> Not funny, but. <laughs> Someone would have skipped, they would have missed that. They would have missed the joke? Yeah. The inappropriate one? Now they gotta go back. <laughs> God, man. Alright, I'm just gonna hold this for a second. I'm sick of clicking. There it is. See it? Okay. So I'm still holding this in. I let the thermocouple heat up. Let this out slowly and then turn it to whatever temperature I want. Here we go out. I don't know, it's tough to see on the camera, I believe. There it is, lit up. So then I can adjust, you know, 350, 400. Obviously when you're cooking with gas, things cook a little bit faster, and these are RV cooktops, so just bear that in mind. But, always let your stove top first. When you go and try to light your oven, you can t leave this on pilot if you want, but I just suggest just lighting it each time you're gonna use it. A lot of people don't use their oven at all. Whenever you're using your cooktop, make sure you light, uh, make sure you uh, start up the fan, and never use this as a heating appliance. It's only for cooking. Now, come around the side here, Brendan, we have ourselves a thermostat. In most models, this is in the main bedroom. Pretty simple to use. We're just gonna push the on button. That lights things up. And then we're gonna keep pushing the mode slash on button to go through our modes. So, it says off right here. First mode is fan, and that's on the AC. So I can control the speed of the fan, either high, low, or auto. So if I just want to run the fan on low, I'll leave it on low there. There our fan on the AC comes on. If you don't want to just run the fan though, we're going to turn this back to auto, and that will um, allow the fan to come on automatically when you have your AC. Push mode again, it goes to cool. So I'm obviously above 55 degrees in through here, so now our fan and our AC are on, and the AC will determine the speed of the fan, okay? Push mode again. I'm uh, below 90 degrees Fahrenheit. AC should shut off. And the furnace just came on, okay? Push mode again. Everything will shut off, so the AC will shut off. The furnace will continue to run for about a couple minutes afterwards just to get rid of any excess heat. Um, so yeah, so just keep going through modes. Obviously up and down here to control the temperature. Pretty straightforward stuff. Brandon, am I missing anything? Radio. That's what I miss. Anything else I'm missing, Brandon? Um, I think we should maybe comment about uh, how you can add a TV and all the imagines. Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So uh, the radio is pretty straightforward. You have zone one and zone two, inside and outside. So when you're doing that, you can do that. On, off, up and down for the volume. You can adjust uh, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, and then source. Source would be either USB or uh, HDMI in through here. Read the manual on this. The key here is uh, you hook up to your phone using the Bluetooth. You can listen to the radio up and down the volume in zone one and zone two. Pretty straightforward stuff. Let's talk about TVs, Brendan. In the bedroom specific. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> remember on the outside, we had a spot we can bring cable and satellite into. If you put it in the cable, it's gonna spit out in all these cable spots. But if you wanna run satellite to your bedroom TV, that's what that guy's for. You bring the coax to your receiver, your receiver to your TV. TV backer location, which means there should be a spot here to mount a TV. When, I'm, when I would do that in service, I wouldn't just run a screw in and hope it's gonna hold on to something. I would take a very small drill bit, drill it in that spot, make sure there is a backer before I start running in like some rough style screws because you can just pull the paper out and you're, you know, you're left with like a, a hole, which sucks. So take a very small drill bit, drill through, make sure there's actually something to screw the TV into. Right on, and then when you are putting that TV bracket on, um, you know, you wanna do it in a way that you can kind of strap the TV against the wall or use a flat bracket, because obviously going on the road, um, you don't wanna bounce it around. There is TV brackets you can just screw onto the wall, and then another part of that bracket goes on the TV. 
I think you just take it off when you're traveling, put it back on when you get there. But I'll let you guys figure that out for yourselves. Pretty straightforward. There is a backer there, but always test that. Now, uh, you want to take over and talk about the Compass Connect, Brennan? Let's do it. All right, let's flip it around here. Right on. Josh doesn't know how to use that, so good luck, everybody. Okay, we're coming around the corner here. So a cool thing that they're they're gonna be doing is putting this sheet with a sticker already with a QR code um, right inside um, your big um, setup here with all the manuals and all. And then the, they're doing it there because they are also giving you um, like a sticker right here, but if it were to fall off, um, yeah, then they're giving you that option there. I'm just gonna come around the corner here, Brian, and show off that QR code. So they're giving you the QR code there stuck, but sometimes that stuff falls off. And they're also giving you another copy of that. And then actually Grand Design's keeping a copy of the QR of it as code. Well. So you can reach system. out to them. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna search for the Compass Connect app. Is that a Blackberry you got there, Brian? It is, is it is not. We got an iPhone going on here. So then we're gonna get the app. My wife's getting me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> we're going real time here. So we're just loading up here. Okay, okay so we got it downloaded. Um, so this is kind of what you see when you first go in. So we have to view the license agreement. Um, you have to scroll through all that. I'm a very, very fast reader as you can all see. Ooh, there we go. Yes, I agree to that. So I guess it's telling us some stuff. Hey, Compass Connect, welcome to the next generation of Compass Connect. And I suggest something, we're all ears. Better daytime readability. So now we're gonna be black and white, I guess. We got some better than ever favorites. You're gonna be able to customize it. And then more's coming. They're gonna let us know when the update's ready, so we're gonna begin. So you, yeah, so we gotta create an account. And then we're gonna, what, is it, roll through all this? Yeah, it? I think so. Yeah, yeah. do it all. First. So what's your name, is it Brandon? I believe so, Brandon. And then Hannah Meyer. Do you know how to spell that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing we got autofill. <laughs> be Hannah Meyer Lazy Acres. I don't have a zip code. Um, let's, uh, let's see if we can do a postal code. Okay, I think it worked. And my preferred dealer, obviously Lazy Acres. This. This does not seem alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> One thing while Brandon's scrolling through that uh, uh, is that. Uh, the Imagine stuff is prepped for a TPMS system. The Reflection product, which is the level up from here, has the TPMS system. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're doing your Compass Connect here. Uh, just pick one, Brandon. Don't worry about it. Buddy. Brett's RV and Marine. <laughs> oh, that's nice you throw that out there. You can make a password. <laughs> there we go. So the VIN's optional. I'm not going to put a VIN on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> One control home. So I got an email already. So please go to log in. Log in. So I can probably just do it on the app. Yep. Brought me to the same spot. <laughs> there we go. So now we're able to add the trailer to it. So it says tap the plus icon to connect to your RV and devices. So we'll hit that up there. And then RV connection, says not connected, 
So we'll do that, and then it wants us to scan a camera, so we're gonna scan with, or like scan the barcode. Grant location, it wants to know where we are. Allow while I'm using app. And it wants to use my camera. And then now we just, there we go. We scanned that, connect to RV, the ID and password on the sticker attached to the gateway RV. So just loading. RV connected successfully. Continue. Select the year. This is a 2023. Yep. Grand design. It is an Imagine. Select floor plan, 2400 BH. Confirm. RV details set successfully. Cool. Now this is cool. So now it's telling us what our battery voltage is. Uh, for some reason, we got stuff in the gray tank. It was telling us also that on this display here. Mm -hmm. So virtually everything that you can see on there will be through here. And then I can shut the lights off on the interior just like that. And then do the exterior as well. We can do the awning. We can even do the slides. So we're bringing that in right from the phone. Yep. And bring it back out. Pretty quick. I'm surprised. Yeah, and so this is this is on Bluetooth, which means you have to be in range. Like you can't just do this from home. But uh, yeah, once you're connected, you're able to do all this stuff, which is great. So yeah, this okay. is very very cool. Yeah, I think we're good. Right on. So thanks, folks. My uh, there you go. Thanks for watching the video. <laughs> hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Leave us a comment down below. I understand that video is you know cumbersome and just trying to get through stuff there for you, but skip through what you need to skip through, get the information you need, uh, and then have yourself a good day. Bye-bye.